It's lunchtime, and this is Brad Anderson's Lunch Break. Here in Redmond, we're visited by some of the smartest people on the planet, pretty much every day. Every chance I get, I meet up with them for lunch. Today, I finished talking with Jay Emery, the Senior Director of Global Enterprise Architecture at Anheuser-Busch InBev. Anheuser-Busch is really a case study about market domination through cost and innovation. You're the first to use pasturation, first to use refrigeration, yep. first to do mass bottling, the first refrigerated railroad cars, and then the 1870s when you're already big, you went back to Europe to even learn more, and you came back with Budweiser. How does this history of innovation and this growth mindset, you know, from the history, impact the work that you do today? Innovation, like you said, it's kind of in our bloodline. A couple things that we really look at. One is, you know, how do we innovate technology-wise, right? So we're really focused, at least in the beer garage, at how do we leapfrog, right? Get rid of the incremental thought, because everybody's doing incremental updates, but how do we jump from on-premise sure. data centers directly to cloud, right? Versus yeah. a phased approach, right? How do we really leapfrog in terms of, um, from a technology roadmap to help create a bit of that, that competitive advantage? We also look at how do we lead from a social responsibility perspective? And then we also want to make sure that uh, we're really driving the change uh, on, uh, on consumption, right? So really focus on spending almost a billion dollars over the next several years on communicating the responsible drinking message because we want people to enjoy our products. Yep but we want to do it responsibly, balance. exactly. I gotta tell you, I hear that you guys have got the best products on the planet, but I can honestly say I've actually never tasted one. <laughs> we, we, we will find a way for you to do that, Brad, I'll tell you. You know, it, believe it or not, we, um, a, a big part of what we've been doing, and we, we do a lot, being in the alcohol industry, we really a big a big focus on social responsibility. Oh yeah, um, I, I environmental. I've seen that in your message. Yeah, we're, we're actually made kind of an internal uh, pledge, really, by 2025, 20% 20 of our volume is going to come from low alcohol or no alcohol. You know, I was going to ask you about that's a huge change. Tell me it what is. you're doing there. So what we're finding is that with the new generation of drinkers that come in into the into the world, they're more focused on health, right? And and kind of less loyalty in terms of a single brand, so they like to experiment. Um, we want to kind of take the stigma away from that and say, why can't you have a, a non-alcohol mm -hmm. beer, yep. right, with lunch, sure. right? Or you know, if you know, if you have a you know, if you know where to get Coke or Pepsi yeah. or whatever, why yeah. can't you have a non-alcohol product, sure. right? And so we're really seeing some some good growth in that marketplace, right? As as, as people, so as it's people probably safe to say that that kind of like uh, starts after the kids graduate from college. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So uh, okay. so so next time we'll come, I'll have some non-alcohol we'll beer for you. Uh, yes, <laughs> I read an article where you were talking about the balance of working with service vendors and software vendors versus doing as much as you can do in-house. Yep. Right? And, and you know, the way you described about it is, you know, you want to leverage the, the skills of the world, but you want to keep the architecture yep. internally. What results have you seen from that? Uh, very, very positive results. I, I think I, we look back and I, and I think what we realized was that we, we didn't have as much um, in-house technical knowledge that we needed to really set the strategy, right? We were, in many cases, we're dependent on, and sometimes our vendors, to set the strategy for us, right? And and that's great, we, we, we love our vendors and our partners, but a lot of times there's that, they don't maybe don't understand as deeply as the business needs and where we're going as a, as a company. So we really made a concerted effort to bring those enterprise architects back in-house, yep. right? Um, and we're starting to see big, big benefits from it, right? We're, we're, we're much more quickly able to push and kind of leapfrog technologies, right? Nice. So we're, we're not having to get stuck with that technology debt where we just look at, you know, minor upgrades and, and, and you know, we're able to really sell the thing in because we're coming up and Be much more up. bold and impactful. Exactly, exactly. A few months ago, we, we brought even more of our solutions together in Microsoft 365. Yep. As you think about that vision from Microsoft, what from that is going to help you with your your future workspace? What we try to do, and, and I think this is where that this this fits into kind of our, our strategic roadmap, is we really sit down and really to understand um, technology technology profiles, right? What are the tools that our users need mm -hmm. to do their jobs? Mm -hmm. So we really go through and really try to figure out what's the right profile for the right roles. We don't look at people, we look yeah, more at the, at the roles, roles. Yep. right? Yep. And then and then make sure that we've got the right right security and technology for those individuals to be productive. So 
one of the things that we're looking at, I like the Windows 10S mm -hmm. um, product, yep. especially for that security component, That's right. right? Where we have um, a mix of you know corporate laptops, BYOD. We also have kind of a thin client infrastructure. How does that fit into that yeah. kind of that profile? I think it's a very interesting it's uh, conversation. Interesting. One, one of the teams that I run here is a team that actually is out doing pilots right now, in you know roughly a hundred customers where they're all piloting S mode to understand you know which roles exactly your point does configuring Windows to be in S mode as opposed to being in, exactly. in Pro mode, and it's really just pretty remarkable the benefits that they're seeing. You know, in terms of, of the security, but the simplicity yeah. and cost. I mean, it really is a great experience. All right, thanks, thank Jay. You. Thank you so much, bro. Oh, thank you for doing that. That was painless. <laughs> I liked it. I liked the questions too. Yeah, cool. All right, thank you. Thank you.